Hey, the rumors are true. This playthrough actually exists. I said this thing was going to happen, what, six years ago? And now it finally is. So, this is Metroid Fusion. Um, as I've said multiple times, this is going to be a low percent run. It was originally going to be 1%. Now it is currently 0%. If you don't know what that means, it'll be explained in a little bit. Um, I'm not going to be cutting out any of this intro story stuff, so I'll have, like, 10 minutes to ramble about nothing at the beginning here. But um, before I get started in that, as I've also mentioned multiple times, I do have a guest with me this time, so you can go ahead and introduce yourself here. Hello, I'm Kabuthank. Uh, yeah, I might have uh, heard of me or seen me on Planet Zebeth or something, but yeah, hello. So yeah, basically, um, I started reading... Th I, I'm still used to pronouncing it Zebeth. I guess that's not how it is. But yeah, I, st I found that comic ages ago. I guess it started in 2002. I probably found it in, like, maybe 03. I don't know. Um, <laughs> one of the old schoolers. <laughs> and so, like, I can actually remember the very first one I read. It was, uh, like, the newest one at the time was... Ridley was, like, trying to hide the booze somewhere because... I don't remember why, and Garuda was trying to destroy it, and so he's like, and now I had to move it all the way down here, and he closes the door behind it, and he's like, and nothing can get in this room besides a massive fire. Yup, massive uh. fire. And Garuda's <laughs> like, I know, I'll flood it. So, it's like... <laughs> oh, that section, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, for anybody who's not read that comic, I do recommend it. It's still technically ongoing, it's just it's no longer a... Uh, regular it's not three thing, times so. a week <laughs> yeah just various metroid shenanigans but uh, yeah, i keep it active so anyway focusing on the actual game here if you <laughs> care about such things um this is obviously the backstory um in terms of the metroid canon this is actually the latest game in the series um like timeline wise it follows the events of originally Super Metroid, and then they retconned Other M to be in between those two games, but we don't talk about Other M. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, it's pretty obvious why this is the last one here, uh, just this part of the story. It's kind of like, eh, okay, so all the other Samurai are gonna look different at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'd still like to see another thing after this, but, um, I guess as we'll see at the end of the playthrough, after the events of this game, there are some certain, like, things that go on that would, I guess, change the tone of the series. I don't know. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, like, I, I'm leaving all this stuff here and not speeding it up so that if anybody wants to read it, they can, but I'm not gonna be reading out the text or even really paying that much attention to it. <laughs> Metroid vaccine! The baby Metroid saves us again! <laughs> I do have to say I like this spinning uh, DNA thing here. For the GBA, that's actually really cool looking. Hmm. Yeah, this was a pretty good game in general, just, uh, the Ridley that they drew was kind of comical is about all. What's that? Uh, like the frozen, uh, Ridley that you come across at some point oh, or yeah. another. Awesome suit, though, I do kind of like that. Yeah, I'm- I'm still not sure how I feel about this game. It's, uh, I don't- for different colors, maybe. I don't like the linearity of it, yeah. and it's kind of, like, it's- really different in tone from most of the other ones, but, um, it's not bad, and it's, uh, it was actually the first 2D one I ever played, because the first game I played was Prime, and then I got this, so it's, like, I've got kind of the soft spot for it for that regard, but I still think Zero Mission and Super are better than this. Oh, yeah, by far. Zero Mission was amazing, just take the original Metroid game and, like, now here's a little bit of what happens after. That was pretty good. So you said your favorite is still the second one? Yep, Metroid 2. For mainly just one reason. That's still the only Metroid game to have startled me with the appearance of a Metroid. All the other ones are like, alright, we're in the Metroid area. Oh, hey, there's Metroids. Metroid 2, ah, all over the damn place. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you go into a random cave and then it just plays horrible 8-bit noises and it's like, oh no. Like, I need health, oh god. <laughs> yeah, I was just playing through that one last night. And, uh, I think if it had 
sound effect and music that weren't awful, it would be a better game. But uh, I still do kind of like that one in a way. All right. There we go. We finally get to see Samus's new ship, which I really like the look of the original ship. This one's kind of... Eh. I don't get why the ship changes every game. Well, here they showed, uh, like, she was all, like, went comatose because the X-Virus infected her, so her ship flew off into an asteroid field and got destroyed. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. So that sort of makes sense there, but I really like the look of the old ship. <laughs> yeah, I like to think that between every game, she, like, pawns off all the upgrades <laughs> and uses it to buy a new ship or, like, some other stuff, and basically that's why you start every game with nothing, because there's really no explanation otherwise. Yeah, a few games have tried to explain it, and, okay, you take a pile of damage and it's all gone now, which, okay, at least they tried to explain it. <laughs> yeah, it's like in, uh, in the first Prime, you start with a few things, not as many things as you might expect, but you've got a few things, and then, like, some electricity hits you and you lose it. It's like, oh, is that just gonna happen every time you take damage in the game now? <laughs> but. So, anyway, um, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about what this run is going to be here <laughs> since uh now we've seen the computer adam talking um and adam's a whole other can of worms on his own but we'll get to that later i guess um basically the entire like the entire flow of this game depends on what this computer tells you to do you don't really have much control over it otherwise and that is very different from the other Metroid games, where it's basically, here's a planet, go see what you can get to, and then when you find an item, go see what else you can get to, and keep going. Um, yeah. And so, um, and most of the other ones, if you're going to do, like, a low percent challenge run, it's usually, like, 10 or 15 percent, because you have to get, like, your certain mandatory items, your bombs, your morph ball, etc. Um, in this game... You have no choice but to get all of the main upgrades. Um, they're actually forced on you in a specific order. There's absolutely no way to sequence break it, even with like glitches and cheats and stuff. And so they didn't even those. Hide secrets? Hmm? They didn't even hide secrets to get like sequence break the first few items. Uh, no. This game actually is coded in such a way that. Like, if you have uh, Moon Jump or something turned on so that you can get to places you're not supposed to, if you get to a uh, data room or a boss earlier than you normally would, it'll actually give you the next item in the sequence instead of what it would normally give you. Oh. It's really Sweet. weird. And so, um, because of that, uh, none of the actual, like, main upgrades in this game count towards your percentage at all. And so, um... For a really long time, it was thought that the lowest possible percentage for this game was 1%, because there's this uh, one particular missile expansion that is just in your way that you cannot avoid. And um, so it's like you'll go, you'll go through the whole game with the 99 energy, never expanding that. You'll get the one missile expansion, and that's it. And then in the past few years, um, it was discovered that there is actually a trick to get past that, and it was very nearly frame perfect. And then last year, they found a better way to get past it. So that'll be in uh, part three of this. I've already got a pretty decent amount of it pre-recorded. You were mentioning you might be doing the uh, Shine Sparky thing uh, at some point or another in there? The secret message one, or...? Yeah. I have not I recorded that, that yet, but I do plan to try. Hmm. I've never actually done it before, but... Um, yeah, good luck. I yeah, yeah. haven't pulled it off myself. Watch the video. <laughs> Adam Milkovich. Indeed. So yeah, it's kind of weird because this game introduces the concept of her working under Adam and basically like the Federation in general. Like they were mentioned in the beginning of Super Metroid and probably like the manuals and stuff, but you never really saw them. This game kind of more just kind of them... people she deals with. Yeah, this one, they're, they're more of a presence, and they talk about, like, oh, there was this guy named Adam, and, like, this is the first time you ever hear about him. And then, ten years later, Other M comes out, and you find out that he's a complete jackass, and he's basically the most hated character in the series. So, <laughs> it kind of ruins Fusion by association. But, uh... Yeah. 
Do target. Whenever I see that, I always think of um, there's a Sega Genesis game called Dynamite Heady, where there's like this training boss you fight, where I think it's like this fairy that holds up signs next to the spots that you're supposed to hit, and it goes target, and it like it it gets to a point in the fight where it does it so rapidly that it's literally like target, 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 <laughs> and so. Not annoying at all. <laughs> it's really bad. So, you'll see me saving a lot in this run. Obviously, early on, it's normal to have a low amount of energy anyway, but um, it can't hurt to you be careful. kind of diving in and out of rooms here and there. Are you going for, like, full map coverage or something, too? No. No. <laughs> no, it's just I don't ever remember where stuff is. There's always that. Because <laughs> I got this game... Like, probably a few months after it came out. I played it then. I did, like, any percent and hundred percent casual speed, run speed runs of it. Like, very casual speed runs, meaning, like, they were probably, like, an hour slower than the good ones, but I just... This was without, just with, without me thing. looking up, like, the ideal way to get through it. Just trying to get through it as fast as I could. But, mm -hmm. um... Basically, when Zero Mission came out, I preferred that game much over this one. Then, my cartridge, for some reason, like, lost the ability to hold a save. You jump over the energy. And, yeah. <laughs> There's going to be quite a few quite a few things like that later on. But yeah, my actual physical version of this game, um, I do still have it, surprisingly. I don't have most of my games from pre-2005. But, um... <laughs> I do have it, but there's something wrong with it, and it can't hold a save. I'd have to, like, open it up and, like, replace the battery or something. I don't know. Yeah, that yeah. might just be easier to get a new one from wherever it's by. Yeah, yeah, I'm not in any hurry to re-obtain this game. It's like, whatever. I do like the bosses in this game. They looked cool. And the whole kind of orby thing at the end, I really liked that. Like, this part of it. Yeah, so that was the uh, Spring Ball boss from Metroid 2. I forget its name. Yeah. Which, wait, does it give you spring ball here? Nope. Nope, Mara Mary. I like how it's called the Mara Mari in the original game. It's a very stupid yeah. name. Yeah, I'm not even sure what that specifically translates to, but yeah, morph ball? Yeah, it's boring sounding. I've heard that it's just round ball, which is a little bit redundant. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Speaking of Marumari, that's the name of another Metroid webcomic that, uh... Oh yeah, I read that one. I don't know if it started before Zebeth or not. Um, I think it was, like, around the same time. I just remember it was, like, it was similar in the sense that they're both 8-bit, and that one had a character named Houston, which was apparently from, like, the Nintendo Power comics. I'm not really sure. Hmm. I think that one was on uh, Metroid 2002, 2002 I think the site yeah. was. Something like that. That was a really good one. There needs to be more sprite comics. It's just amazingly easy to make a comic with it. Did you ever see my um, very, very short-lived like fan comic that I posted on the forums? I may have. Would you have been under the name Big Dip, or...? It was probably Jish at the time. I don't think I was picked up at that point yet. It was like... I'd have to see it. There's a big possibility. Yeah, I think I made like eight strips of it. Um, It was your typical, like, completely unnecessary self-insert comic. Um, hmm. Except not really, because it, it, it's like... it. What, basically, it was just like a Big Dip falls out of a portal and is in the like, planet Zebeth world, and Kraid is, like, choking on his own vomit or something, and, uh, <laughs> basically, Big Dip gets into a conversation with the Crocomire Hunter of, like, what happened before he went through the portal, and so I, it was, like, a sprite-based retelling of my, uh, horrible Bargo the Big Dip story, and it <laughs> got, it, like I said, it was it was very short lived. I don't think it went over eight, maybe ten comics at the most. 
But, uh... What are the odds that you still have those kicking around? I could rehost them on Zebeth. I don't think they need to be. I have them on photo bucket, <laughs> but, um... I'll show you after the recording, and I might link to them, but, uh... They don't Ooh. need to be celebrated in any way. Yeah, the original message board is gone, unfortunately, but... Yeah, I still keep all of the various fan stuff that might have come my way. For as much as I can. Yeah, I liked the, um, the Hall of Shame. Those were pretty good. <laughs> I'm I'm a hundred percent certain that a pile of people were deliberately making terrible comics purely to get into there. And there's some really good awful ones. <laughs> I also made a deliberately terrible one, but I don't think I submitted it. Oh. I'll see if I have that one also. <laughs> but um, I'm just <laughs> I'm trying to remember what some of the like. Do you still have the Hall of Shame on the site? I haven't looked. Oh yeah, yeah. It's in the uh, yeah in the bonus section inside of the How to Make a Guest Comic. And it's linked in there. Yeah. And I've got 11 of them saved. Yeah, I'll have to look through those again. I remember them being really stupid. <laughs> that, was, that was a pretty good one. I also spent a uh, unreasonable amount of time trying to find all of the secrets on the website, and I think there were several levels of it that I just never found at all. Like... I... Oh, that you just uh, kind of never stumbled across any of whatever level type thing? Yeah, because it's like you have the ones where you click on the, uh, like the little hidden sprites. Like, I think there was yeah, one the in the Metroid. banner and stuff like that. I think I yep. found basically all those. And I found some of the ones that you had to do the tab trick that were, like, hidden inside of, inside of other links. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> but were there ones that were, like, hidden in the source or something? Because I think, like, oh, I don't remember the numbers. The but, hmm? Yeah, and uh, the source code for uh, a lot of pages that'll have like a, uh, you know, hidden text to what looks like code for another HTML file. Then you, if you just kind of type that directly into the address bar, that'll pop up something. Hmm. Otherwise, there's just random text inside of more or less to have all of the uh, source code now. Like the older stuff, it was kind of sporadically, but now with all of my updates, I do kind of have some hidden text in inside of there just because. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of my thing now, I guess. <laughs> Do all the secrets still exist on the site, or have any of them been lost? Uh, I've generally kept them around. If I've moved things around, I've tried to move secrets with it. So I can guarantee that there's well over 100 now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I thought there was only, like, 25. Oh, I kept on adding. <laughs> cool. I do have them all actually documented somewhere, the majority of them. Like, all of the harder ones, anyway. My favorite will always be the one talking about, what is it, like, the where you, like, uh, make a guttural noise while shaking a shaman stick. <laughs> uh, the blarg <Blarkshinary. laughs> I think you had, like, a... Yeah, it's like there was just a random MP3 of you doing that. <laughs> yeah. And here's just these. <laughs> Taking a lot of help. Space pirates! Actually looking at the game for once. But, um... I kind of like the health system, where they uh, drop these SAX and you eat them. Indeed. So, our, um... I don't know if you know more about the Metroid canon than I do. Like, I've tried to learn it, but, uh... I have probably forgotten stuff over the years. Like, the Space Pirates... Are they just, like, a subset of a different species that isn't necessarily intelligent or, like... Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the actual thing is, but I just kind of see them as being essentially, like, generic workers of the Galactic Federation or whatever. And just generic, like, space workers, essentially, is how I see them. Yeah. I'm not sure what the actual thing is. Now I'm just kind of adding a pile of them into my comic. <laughs> yeah. I liked the one that, uh, showed up in the comic, and it was supposed to be, like, this major threat, and then you just kind of randomly killed it off, and you're like, yeah, screw it, I'm not doing this plotline. Yeah, I started something there, and then I was like, yeah, this is starting to get boring. Done! <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you know, we need to add more onto the, big story as to how the, that uh, turns into all of the Zabethians now, but, yeah. Clearly we need to just add more things into the pile of, like, Boxy and Unspawny with Gronky <laughs> all in the same area being annoying. Ooh, Unspawny is gone, though. I had to kill Unspawny. Oh, I don't remember that. Oh, oh poor Unspawny never spawned. <laughs> well, at least they will have spawned on ZR388. Is Gronky and Son of Gronky still kicking around? 
Oh yeah, Gronky and Gronky. <laughs> yeah, pretty much I've only had to kill just uh, Unspawny and uh, Gola Gridley for a year there. <laughs> I, I was proud of myself because I actually predicted what was going to happen with Wrigley there. Yeah. Oh, uh, with uh, coming back type of thing? Yeah, because... Um... Like, right after it happened, I actually posted on the forums, like, guys, it's okay, he saved, and I linked to the comic where he was standing on the save stick, and that turned ah. out to be exactly right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you, uh, read the comic up till the point where I, uh, killed the mother heart? Um... Like, that was kind of the end of the main storyline-ish area. I think I did, it's been a while. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, like... It's hard to remember everything that happened because a lot of times the story just kind of meanders for a while. It's like yeah, they'll be like doing do something that. and then Samus is like, I'm bored, I'm just gonna go do something, and then, like... Item hunting or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah fun stuff. So... Yeah, I still have a mother brain kicking around there at 95% brain uploaded. <laughs> yeah. I imagine once the game kind of gets into more difficult sections, I'll be paying more attention to it. Like, I'm watching what's going on. It's just there's not much to say other than, yep, I sure am doing what you would normally do in this game. Um, so do you only have ten missiles for the entire run at this point now, then? Yep. Ooh. <laughs> On the plus side, I guess this thing kind of spits out... Well, it was spitting out health when you shot it before. I think it still does. But yeah, it's uh, the ten missiles aren't as big of a deal as the 99 energy, because there's... Uh, if you haven't played this game in a while, you might not remember. There's enemies that... It has been a while. Th there's enemies that do an entire tank of damage just from touching them. Ooh. Like, there's a section that I've already recorded where there's, like, these little bee things that, uh... They're just kind of all flying around in this area, and I died probably five times just due to bumping <laughs> into these enemies. Like, Ooh. I'll be as careful as possible like trying to shoot off screen predicting where they are and then I'll have like oh I turns out I missed one flies in <laughs> dead <laughs> oh <laughs> the cheap kills <laughs> there you, go, you kill her cleared up all the ventilator things of which is blasting holes into it apparently fixes them <laughs> yeah I, and I do like the little <laughs> noises that they make Oh yeah, that they're all squeaky, like, is there no maintenance staff here? That poor energy tank that you have to run by, and it's like, oh, it's right there! <laughs> this I don't think I could do a low percentage run. I, I need to get my items. <laughs> yeah, this entire game is just kind of weird, because, um, again, if you, like, for anybody who hasn't played this game, if you weren't reading any of the info at the beginning. This entire game takes place on a space station that is basically just recreating various environments, and also, apparently this is the end of the video, so never mind. Okay, we're done. Um, All right, then! Well, just any last second stuff talking over blackness, or...? Yep, I think we're good for now. Uh, maybe record another one when we can, and it's all awesome. All right, so yeah, we will uh, be back next week, I guess.